Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hi, how's it going? I'm trying to use the uh, control room, but I can't, I can't like grab the live chat. You know how at the top of the chat window says top chat and I want to toggle it to live chat. Well, in the control room, it's like it goes off the screen and I can't select it. It's really weird. So I think I figured it out, but how's it going? Happy Wednesday. Is the camera crooked? It looks really like it's sitting there like this. <laughs> um, so this month, September is here. Happy September. Um, we have a, I have a lot of things I'm going to sew this month because we're doing the blazer so long. And I'll tell you a little bit about that or a lot about that soon. And we're going to do that every Saturday, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to stream during the week on Wednesday and Thursday. So, so now I'm making still making a project every week plus the blazer. And I didn't think through the whole sewing part one, sewing part two thing, so, but I'm pretty sure I can sew all those things in one go. Maybe we'll cut it, sew a little bit that day and then do the finishing the next day. But I really do like my videos to be like cutting, sewing, you know, so. <laughs> Hi, Elena. Hi, Malin. Hey, Beverly, Fiona, Delta, Kate. Yeah, the view of me is crooked. Exactly. I might go fix it because it's kind of annoying me. I mean, the table, if you can't see the table, it helps, but um, I can't reach it. <laughs> so I have to go all the way around. Yeah, so we can look at it. Let's see. I have it. I have it right here. here. All right. So <clears throat> starting off today and just through this week, I'm going to very like gently cut and fit the auburn blazer. You can sew whatever blazer you want. Um, most blazers are gonna be very, very similar to what I'm doing. As far as the things like the collar, lapel, welt pockets, you know, um, the inner facings and things like that, but maybe yours has darts and not princess lines, you can handle that, right? Um, but it'll be lined, um, we'll bag the lining, we'll do all that. We're gonna do all of the typical details of the blazer. I am not a, I'm definitely not claiming to be an expert in tailoring or coat making. I've sewn a lot of things in my 35 years. I've even worked in a tailoring shop, uh, but I didn't specialize in this. So we're gonna do this together. I feel really, really confident though. Like I'm not worried about it at all. And there's maybe some things I just don't choose to do. But for the most part, whatever you're up for, I'm up for too. And I'm gonna look at the 
Auburn sew along on cashmere as well and just kind of make sure that really that I just stay true to what their intent was in some of the aspects of this pattern <clears throat> but I'm not going to deviate from my own style or um, sewing style so <laughs> fair warning. <laughs> um, so after this week so today specifically I'm really trying to make this very very manageable and fun and simple and easy like you're not even going to know you're sewing it. What do you think of that? You're not even going to know like it's just going to be done at some point. So the first thing I'm going to do today on this particular blazer is I'm going to select my size because I don't think that there's enough emphasis on things like this that are you're like oh my gosh what if I don't even like select the right size you know and there's a lot of stuff when you make a cash wrap pattern to consider when you're selecting your size. So I'm going to select my size. Um, I've already looked at it and used their silent sizing calculator so I know I need to do a small bust adjustment which shocks the ever-loving heck out of me because I've had a breast reduction and I'm still pretty busty but I'll tell you more about why I have to do that and uh, and I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it out in a muslin or a canvas which is kind of similar to what I'm sewing my final jacket in and I might sew it together but I won't fit it without you. Tomorrow I'm gonna fit it and then I'm gonna make any changes to my pattern if I'm ready on Saturday to cut my blazer out, I will, but if I'm not, I'll cut it out next Saturday. So then after this week, the blazer sew along is just every Saturday. So if you want to hang out with us every Saturday and sew your blazer or just see what we're up to, it should be fun. It's, they're not going to be incredibly intensive sewing sessions, so it should be pretty awesome. I think I'm actually really looking forward to chipping away at this. I love big projects and chipping away, so that'll be good. For the rest of the month, next week, I've already launched my laundry basket pattern. I just haven't told anybody. <laughs> hey, Terry. Yay. Hi, Libby. Um, and I'll be cutting and sewing it next week because I got like seven eighths of the way through editing the video for that pattern. And I was just like, you know, this pattern, this video is just too much. And so I'm just going to cut it live and sew it live. And um, yeah, so those will serve as my videos. And it'll be a great way for me to launch the pattern. I'm not expecting a huge, like, selling of this pattern. I know it was my own little pet project and all the um, tier two and above patrons got it for free. Uh, so the following week after that, I'm going to be doing the glissando. Is that how you say that? <laughs> Pants by Love Notion. Last Friday, it was a $5 pattern. So if you're ever, if you're on their mailing list, every Friday they offer a pattern for $5 and I've already picked up two of them and sewn them. So if you want to get on the mailing list and then I usually put in my stories that day if I'm going to be buying it. So if you're kind of curious like oh I got that email I wonder if she's getting that because I kind of like this pattern or if you're like hey I want you to sew that let me know. Let me know that day and then I'll get it. After that I, uh, Wardrobe by Me, I should have wrote on my calendar there that they're sponsoring that, uh, the Piper Boho Tunic, and I should have also written Piper Boho Tunic by Wardrobe by Me Patterns, and I'm even an uh, um, affiliate of hers, I forgot about that too, <laughs> just the lamest when it comes to that kind of thing. Uh, I don't know which view I'm going to be making, but if you have suggestions, there's lots of views, and if you go to my Instagram post from yesterday, you'll see I put all the views there, just swipe. <clears throat> and the last week of the month, I'm making a kids pattern. I hardly ever sew kids. Hi, Donna. Um, and my niece and nephew, you know, it's back to school. Not, I don't even think they're going back to school. I think maybe they are, I can't remember. But I'm gonna make them hoodies and I'm gonna make the kids hide jacket. That's like a very traditional zip hoodie, kangaroo pockets, the whole bit with um, ribbing, um, draw cord. I'm just realizing that I may have forgotten to get the grommets, but I can still get those. I have all month. Yesterday is my pack day where I get everything for the month. It's kind of crazy. So that's my plan this month. I hope that any of those things look good to you guys and you want to join in. I know a few of you already have the Piper and the Glissando. Uh, so that'll be fun. So anyway, that's what we're doing for September. I do not know how long the sew along for the blazer will last. Uh, it's gonna last till we're done. <laughs> we're doing until it. we're done. No, <laughs> it's not like I'm threatening you. <laughs> so, all right, so what am I making? <clears throat> 
Sorry, I haven't hardly talked at all today. So I am making the Auburn Blazer by Cash Moret. I picked this one because I felt like it was a neutral blazer that covers all of the classic blazer, um, you know, aspects. And it comes in a lot of sizes. In fact, I'm at the bottom end of their size range, which is very rare. Usually I'm at the top lately of the ones that aren't that inclusive. And they build their patterns around cup sizes specifically for larger busted women. So I am a large busted woman, but not this large busted. So their size calculator recommends that I do a small bust adjustment, which I've never done before in my life. <laughs> so this is gonna be fun. Yeah, nice Melin. Yeah, check your stash. For the um, Piper, you don't really need any notions, like anything out of the ordinary. For the Glissando, those are button fly, so you might wanna check you have those. Yeah, oh yeah, and thank you Martina for mentioning, like if you don't wanna do a blazer, cause I know that's a pretty specific wardrobe piece. Like I literally see now, I see my um, neighbor in this office and I see my husband <laughs> and that's all I see. I really don't see people. I live pretty rurally. Sometimes I go to the grocery store. I don't really need a place to wear a blazer, you know, but I'm kind of excited about doing it because it's just one of those sewing, you know, you know, milestones, right? It's been years since I've made one. And I bought the kit from uh, Cash Moret, which I can show you a little bit. So if you're kind of like, ugh, I don't wanna get all of the supplies for that, you can get a kit from them. And if you don't wanna make a blazer, you can make whatever coat you want. You can make a jacket coat. Wardrobe by Me just came out with a really cute canvas jacket. Um, if you just wanna do even just a big project and you kinda of wanna just chip away at it all like all month into October and just this kind of you're like, okay, I'm gonna chip, at, chip away at it. When they're making their blazer, I'm gonna make my astronaut costume. You know what I mean? So <laughs> you can do whatever you want. So this is what is in the kit. So you get the horse hair, you get some interfacing, shoulder pads, more interfacing, buttons, uh, seam tape, different size buttons too. So this is everything you need to make the blazer as stated in their instructions. And then the fabric I'm doing is a canvas. It's kind of, it's pretty heavy, but it's got a lot of drape. It's a linen canvas. It's got a really nice texture too. And the color looks much better on the face cam. It is definitely my classic teal. It matches my frame <laughs> perfectly. I'm using a linen lining but I might line the sleeves with just like a, like a polyester lining that's more slippery because for me, um, I really don't like when I get hung up on items when I'm getting them on and off. And because of my bust and sh wide shoulders, I sometimes just feel a little bit like hemmed in, you know? I know that this isn't the most ideal lining fabric, so I may just do this in the body of the jacket and then something slippery in the sleeves to kind of combat that, you know? Cause I feel like I've seen coats like that and worn them and I'm like, oh, clever, you know? Or what they do is like, I had this one really amazing coat once that was a super soft knit and it looked like wool, but it was actually a really fancy fleece and it was like kind of thick and chunky. And so it was very tacky, like it would stick to everything if I, you know, cause it didn't slide, it was a knit, but they lined the sleeves in a satin. And so it made wearing that jacket, getting it on and off totally fine. Otherwise I don't think it would have worked. Hey Susie. Oh, cool. Oh, see, I think that's, I like that, I like that. All right, you're making the Claire coat, Malin, that's right. A princess coat, oh nice. Is it a little, it's like it long, a long style, Martina? All right, so I pulled out all my pattern pieces just for the fitting and that in means I just got the center front, the side front, the center back, the side back, and then the two sleeve pieces, that's all. There are a ton of pattern pieces. Um, and I, I have the PDF version and the print version of the pattern because I pre-ordered it and so that was part of the deal. Like if you pre-ordered it, if you pre-ordered the print, you got the PDF for free. 
So I don't have any problems cutting up my pattern. I still have the PDF as a backup. And um, what else was I gonna say? Oh, I don't think, I think I was just gonna say that's when I ordered the kit, but who cares about that? It is flared. Yeah, that'll be cute. I love that style. That's awesome. I like longer coats. Like once I had one, I was like, oh, I like this. Fingers crossed for both of you. You got this, you guys, you got this. <laughs> And maybe yours, you guys are probably finished before us too. I think Terry's doing like a very classic blazer as well. So I know I'm not the only one. So this will be great. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a small bust adjustment. I don't think I've ever done that live on camera. So that'll be great. And I wanted to show you why I'm doing that. So I have the size chart for this on the screen here. Um, let me zoom that in a little bit and then I'll show you. So here, I need to move this over here though. There we go. You can't see me, sorry. The camera's at the wrong side of the screen, but I, I'm like, I'm right here. Um, so here's the size chart for the Auburn, just to give you an idea. And then there's this size calculator up here. So the things you need to determine when selecting your size, and it felt a little overwhelming to me, so I know this probably feels a little overwhelming to everybody because you're kind of like, oh, this is more steps, I can't just jump into it. We are not just jumping into this project. We're just chipping away and dipping our toe and then slowly getting into the yum, yummy warm bath water, okay? Like how, that's how we're doing this, okay? So the, the, you need to take your uh, measurements right here, your high bust, your full bust, pick your, your uh, cup size, your waist, your hip, and then you calculate. And so here's my results. And my measurements have gotten bigger I think that also because I wore, I did it over my dress because I want to wear this over clothes. And I might, I was a little bit loose um, with my measurements too because I, I might wear a sweater under this, right? So this is really interesting because it says, we recommend that you start with a size 16 in the CD. And then they recommend doing a two inch small bust adjustment. And then I need to do the size 16 waist and a size 14 hip, which I probably won't go down a size for the hip. I don't really need my jacket to taper. I'll probably just stick to the size 16. And, and when I try on my muslin, I'll determine that for sure. So um, like I said, I've had a breast reduction. I, it doesn't mean that I am small busted now, but I this is pretty cool. And so if you read this, it says, our patterns are designed for curves in cup sizes C to H. If your cup size is smaller proportionally to your shoulders than our CD cup size, you will need to do a small bust adjustment. And then that's how you, um, that's how they determine. And it's because they're specifically making these patterns to fit women that are fuller busted better. And I am not as full busted as their target is. All right. So <clears throat> I did my little size calculator. And this is all really easy to find on their website if you want to check it out. Okay, let's let's go back here. I need to move you over here and move you over here. And there's my chat. You're using an old butterick pattern. Oh, okay, great, great. Hi, Brig, welcome. <laughs> uh Oh, okay, you're talking to Susie Mullen. Okay, okay. Cool. All right, so like I said, let's do this. Um, I lost my chat now. I'm trying different things. That does not go without being punished for it, right? <laughs> All right, so I pulled my pattern pieces. And so if you're making the Auburn, you're going to need to remove the pattern pieces that aren't for your size and by a cup. So there are three different side fronts and hem facings. 
because they're each drafted for a different cup size. See that? So just look under there and it says that. The other size thing you need to know is which bicep you're going to be doing because there is a full bicep sleeve and a standard bicep sleeve. And that, you just figure that out on the size chart, it's right there, and then it'll tell you which one to do. And I can pull that up again if you want, but it, it's literally a line in the um, chart right at the bottom, underneath the chest waist. Sorry, I don't have autofocus on. It's right there, standard and full, and then you just find your number. My number's not even on this chart, I thought I had a full bicep, I guess not. I'm feeling kind of a uh, wafy right now. This is kind of funny. So I'm also gonna make the full length because I feel like it's a little more versatile. Um, and that means I'm making this standard hip length, but there is a shorter one, which is really cute. It's kind of hard. Maybe I should do the short one. I could wear that over dresses if it were short, like she did. Hi, Lynn. Welcome, welcome. Exactly, Susie. Welcome, welcome. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll try on my muslin on the side then, right? All right, so let's get this side front here. All these other pieces right here. I put all the pieces that I don't need that are my size in my bin here. Lining, uh, welt pockets, um, the... That's pretty much everything. Lining, well, pocket. There's a lot of pattern pieces in here. Interfacing, stuff like that, pattern pieces. Um, I put all the pattern pieces that are not my size, I just put them back in the envelope because I don't want to get confused. And I'm still going to probably look at these to make sure. So I'm going to be using... Can you guys see that? I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of say... See, I'm sorry, I was <laughs> reading chat. Um... I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see my pattern pieces a little better. I think that might help because they're so pale. I'll use a Sharpie. Would I say this needs a lining? No, um, I think when we get to the construction of it, if you're use, doing a blazer that um, you don't want to line, just remind me to talk about how to hem it. But no, I don't think you need a lining at all. In fact, I think an unlined blazer is pretty versatile, you know? Maybe what you could do is face the hems. And then that gives you options so that, say, because there's no, say that, because, you know, there's no hem allowance except for the amount that's going to turn up and attach to the lining. That is typically, like, 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 that is, like, your hem allowance. And if it's enough for you, great. But maybe what you could do is say, all right, if it's not enough, I will just add a facing to the hem because I think that's a classy way to do it and it gives it more structure and it probably will help it um, retain its shape and not need as much ironing, depending on what fabric you pick. I'm thinking in terms of the canvas that I'm using. So, all right, so the, sm the small bust adjustment. Okay, I have my Sharpie here. I'm gonna get my ruler. And I think what I'm gonna do is just do it right on this pattern piece here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find, I'm gonna draw my seam allowance on here because you need to do this, always do your adjustments on the seam line. I hate doing this with a Sharpie, let me see. I'm going to, but I need to find the sharpest Sharpie I have right now. Here we go. Sharpies are just not very precise. So we're just gonna draw in the half inch seam allowance on here. So if you're doing this on your piece, make sure whatever blazer, or if you're just doing a small bust adjustment on anything, make sure you draw in your seam allowance. Ah, oh, there you go, Kate. I think that's, that's a good, yeah, I've had a, a couple of jackets that were unlined and I liked them. In my climate, that would actually pr be pretty appropriate too. And admittedly, my my color choices aren't the most winter appropriate <laughs> um, blazer choice. And really winter is about the coolest it gets here. I don't have a very long winter. We have a 
much more temperate climate. It's very Mediterranean climate here and very warm. Um, so I'm probably gonna get this like late fall to early spring is my window. And I know my colors are kind of light, but I fell in love with them and I, I don't care. So there's that. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna make a horizontal line and I want you to do this perpendicular to the length grain at the fullest part. So kind of, if you're a little tiny bit off, don't worry about it. Just try and find the fullest part there. Knowing cashmere, this, dark, this uh, notch is probably the fullest part. All right. And now we're gonna draw another line. Let's find our waist too. So we're gonna use this notch here as our waist, the narrowest point. And if usually when you see instructions for how to do these, it's probably a pattern piece that ends right here at the waistline, whereas obviously this one goes down lower. So we're just gonna adjust for that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna draw a line from this point here at this intersection of the seam to that fullest point of the bust. I'll do this in a different color. How's that? Look at how fancy I'm getting. All right, so this is our second step. We're gonna draw a straight line here to here, and then we're gonna draw a straight one to this waist point here as well, okay? And now um, this is the confusing part because you need to, I need to do a two inch small bust adjustment. And that just seems like so much because you're only gonna do this on this pattern piece. So basically you need to take it in half, right? So we're going to move this line an inch over here and we're gonna draw a parallel line this and now we're going to cut so I'm going to also just take this line straight down here like that and you can see like our welt here is probably you know actually I'm not going to do that let me think about this and I, I think you Malin you're right I think I will do a shorter view but let's, I'll decide that when I get to the muslin. I'm kind of forgetting. I've never done a small bust adjustment, really, because I've always had to do a full bust adjustment, and I never even did full bust adjustments. Those kinds of adjustments are kind of um, home sewing-ish. You know what I mean? Like they're not something you learn in fashion school. So I'm kind of deciding like, maybe I want to think about this a little bit more because normally what you would do is you would now say, say we only had it to here or so, or your, you know, maybe your bodice was to here. You would cut up to here. You would cut, I'm sorry, you'd cut on this line here and then you'd overlap it to this line. I don't want to take out any of my waist. That's what I'm thinking about right now. So normally what I would have done is I would fit it. I wouldn't even do this adjustment. I would sew the muslin and I would fit it. I would just figure out what I wanted. I wouldn't do a, 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 a prescribed adjustment. I'm thinking about different ramifications right now. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking about this. Well, we're doing the fitting, right? Let's just do it. I'm gonna cut up this line here. Right there. We're gonna cut this line here, I think, right? We're gonna cut here that point there and I'm going to cut this line here I just well you know I just undid that because it's so much 
I f I'm failing you guys right now. Let's see here. I'm sewing in my head and fitting. I need a piece of tape. I need some tape. Because normally what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to slide this over. Oh man, I cut this like, I shouldn't have cut that. I don't know why I just did that. Did you see me do that? Yeah, I know. These newfangled. I may just, t maybe I'll trace this over because then I can, um, yeah. Well, yeah, but I have my PDF, and so I um, feel like I can always go to, like, I can always reprint it. Just a second, I'm looking, I'm looking something up. I kind of refreshed myself on this, but now I'm, I'm feeling like... Yeah. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. This is also, I cut that, this is where I went wrong here. This is where I went wrong. I'm getting it, I'm getting it. This is the one. Let's do a little tiny piece of tape there. I want my hinge to go that way. I don't know if that's what it was. I just did that kind of wrong. So I'm gonna get my hinge back right there. This was right. <laughs> I'm a professional, right? And then this one right here, it's a lot though. Okay, so then you're gonna pull this over and line up this line right here. You're gonna let this kind of, if, it, if you do anything, don't do it on tissue. The tissue is such a pain in the butt. I'm gonna pull this down lower. So I'm not reaching so far. Let me see, what does it look like on your screen? Oh yeah, yeah, that's not too high up. Is this, um, yeah, maybe I will go like this. There we go. There we go, okay. But let me see if I can watch chat too, sorry. Don't you love drama like this? Hi Hannah, how's it going? Uh, their calculator. All right, so now slide this over to this line that we, to your original, seam line there, right? And then try and get this all to relax. I thought I clipped that right there. You need to clip that a little bit of hinge right there. Oh my God. No, don't do that. Oh my gosh, there we go, okay. You have to get this so that it can move like this and that you're coming over here. So now I'm gonna line that up there. And see, look, it takes out a dart right here. You see that? Just like that. Let me use my removable tape. 
if I can find the end. What happened to the end? There it is. I'm very suspicious of this. It's really that it's so much. Like, I could see like maybe an inch. So you see how this line also, here's that original waistline that I drew. There it is right there. See how much it raised it? We gotta deal with that. Hi Sydney, how's it going? I'm just uh, failing at a small bust adjustment here. I really confused myself when I hinged it wrong. Here we go. All right, so, you know, and let's try and, let's put this behind so we can see our line. Actually like this. There we go. Now we can see. Why was it under here like this? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. I just confused myself again. Here we go. See how it is. No, 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 no. Ooh, I am like drawing a blank here. Let's see. I mean, two inches? I don't know, you guys. <laughs> I don't like it. All right, well, we're trying, right? We're trying it out. We need a vacation. I obviously need one too, as well. <laughs> All right, so here we have our new line. So we're still gonna use this original cut line here. You just can't see it because it's underneath. Can you see that? There's my original cut line. Here's my waistline here. So what we need to do is raise this up here and I'm gonna cut this right here. piece here and we're going to raise it up and we need to transfer that amount right there to our other piece. We need to make sure all of our pattern pieces are actually still going to sew together. Just like that. My pocket has moved a little bit. I have a feeling <clears throat> I'm gonna go through this and I'm not gonna have needed this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I should have thought about the tissue thing, you know. Ooh, I'm sorry, Sydney. That is a lot. All right, so here we go. And you're gonna, you know, blend this line in just Ignore this little point sticking out there. I'm gonna just tape it back like this so you can see my line there. In fact, maybe I'll tape this back too. No, we're gonna tape this one back just so we can see our cut line. You can see there's the line right there. All right. And let's tape this right here and find our line here. One, two, three. One, two, three. We're going to blend this in here. This is my line. All right, and let's transfer this same uh, short amount there that we took out of this waist that we took out right there. It's like half inch plus. All 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just making sure I do it at the same spot because that's where I want to do it. And let's take out that amount there. We actually take it out below, so let's remove it below. And I'm just going to fold it. If you wanted like a very like cohesive small bust adjustment uh, tutorial, because I, I know I'm look I'm probably not giving you much of confidence in this right now. Uh, Cashmere has one on their website. My only issue with it is that it doesn't tell you that the amount. So it says take out your amount. But if you needed a two inch bust adjustment, you're not going to do that full two inches on just one piece. You need to split it. One inch seems like a lot to me. I'm very skeptical right now. But like I said, this is an experiment. So, all right, so now theoretically, because we've taken the exact same amount here and here, this down here is gonna be fine in how it matches. Um, up here, we may have a little bit of easing issue. Theoretically, we haven't changed this at all, right? Because we still have our same line intact, but our seam line has just looks like it's moved, but it hasn't, all right? So just remember, you're still cutting on this exact same line. The only time we broke it was right here at the waist, okay? Yeah, me either, Lynn. I'm actually never, if anything, I'm getting, I'm getting bigger. I'm doing a full bust adjustment, but I never knew that's what I was doing at the time because I didn't call it that for forever. It's so hot in here today. I'm so... If you show this method works or not, it's still very valuable for everyone making it. <laughs> you say trust the process. <laughs> I don't think... Have I ever said trust the process? origami calculus oh my gosh I can't imagine all right well let's let's cut it out now I feel like I, I really don't I don't have any videos on um, like things like small bus adjustment or full bus adjustment we've done them before but I've never done a, a specific like video for it I really should I'm sure I'm not inspiring a lot of confidence right now though let me zoom out a little bit only when talking to myself, <laughs> right? It's true. I guess I, I do um, sometimes say, we'll just trust the pattern. <laughs> what else could I do, you know, at that point? I'm live. <laughs> Usually I'm like, just look away, you guys. All right, let me move my fabric. I have some... Um, a weird array of some canvases here that I'm going to use and use up. You guys, this was the one my for my husband's shorts, right? This was it. There's still a lot there. I think I'm going to, it kind of pains me to use this for my blazer. So I'm gonna try and use this other stuff I have here. Uh, yes, Lynn. I mean, it's kind of nice when you have that princess line, you know, right? You get, you already have a lot of potential for some nice shaping with princess seams. I'm going to use this canvas, linen cotton canvas that I have left over. It's gonna look funky, but I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut and sew it inside out so we can see the um, pieces. I'm hoping that I have a long enough piece though. What I could do is make the shorter one as my muslin and see what I think about it. I like that idea. And then I'll use less fabric. 
let's see, this one is not on the fold, but it's like right there. Let's see, how can I get all my pieces on here? This is the side back. I can get right there. That lead, I wanna do one sleeve. Um, where'd that other piece of fabric go? Here it is. Yeah, right, Susie? Exactly. That's what I'm thinking, too. I, the reason that popped into my head about doing the short one right then was there's been a few years now where I really wish I had short sweaters to wear with dresses in the winter. That was a princess seam, Lynn. But I can't see what happened on the butt. <laughs> nice, Melin. Um, all right, so we have the front. And can I get this front? All right, we're going to do the shorter one. I need to shorten the back piece, too. I'm going to just highlight my line here. Twelve, fourteen, sixteen. So it's the third one. We blended there. They recommended that I grade down for the hip. I'm not going to do that. I'm already a little concerned that I lost so much in the uh, waist. Okay, and I'm gonna fold this here. I don't wanna get rid of that vent in the back just in case I use the longer length. So I'm just gonna fold it under. my size here. This, this is actually a really easy pattern to see my sizing on, so I'm probably being a little bit too cautious. But it does help. It makes you more confident. I'm all about that. So let's see. Let's cut this one first. Fold this under. I can get my whole thing. Do I go off of the fabric, I wonder? Maybe I shouldn't, because I don't really want to be distracting with the print. Like half of it being white selvage. Nancy, how's it going? But I can't see what happened on the butt. What do you mean by that? I actually do need to clean out underneath, but my machine mechanics coming next Friday, I'm pretty excited about just for like a checkup. So when you're cutting a muslin or a sample, whatever you want to call it, I recommend that you do the full bodice. But you, you can just do one sleeve if you want. You, you don't really have to do the full sleeve. In fact, it's, it might be kind of nice to be able to see inside your garment. I'm going to fold this up so I don't... I don't want to accidentally fold or cut some of it. It can be kind of nice to be able to see inside the armhole sometimes if you're having bust fit issues, you know? All right, make sure you do all your notches. Set yourself up for success. Oh, 
Not sure what those notches are. We'll put those there. Ooh, scraps from my scrap bin. <laughs> Um, if I make a short version, I can't see. Oh, I'm making the short. Yeah, so there's two lengths, Martina. Comes in two lengths. I'm going to make the shorter one for my muslin. That way I can decide if I don't like it, I'm going to make the longer version. Because I was leaning towards the longer version to begin with. Let's see. Um... Just going to all right. Can I get that there? Maybe not. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Oh, so um, I I think I, I announced, or you guys probably saw on Instagram that I got um, accepted in the um, five out of four patterns ambassador group. And I've applied to a lot of those and I never get accepted. So I was pretty excited surprise like when I actually got the notification I was like did I apply for that <laughs> like I usually get rejected <laughs> and um um someone started a thread in there on like hey let's all follow each other on social media one of the ambassadors and he is a live streamer as well on twitch and he does all kinds of things. Like it looks like he does a lot of quilts and um, other crafts. But I wanted to share that there's another live streamer. And his channel is Pixel in Stitches on Twitch. His name's, I think Aiden is his name. And he also does gaming and stuff like that. I haven't been able to catch him live yet. Like every time I check... It, I've either missed it or he hasn't been live, so. You might see me in there sometime. I'm going to try and go. Hi, Sarah. How's it going? Oh, really? Which one, Beverly? Is it just called Short Cardigan? Oh, wait. Lisbon. I see it now. I didn't see that for a second there. Oh, that's cool. Wait, I saw Sydney ask me a question with her little sticky outy tongue. I don't know, Sydney, you know, I am kind of like, <laughs> I will sometimes, see that was a bad idea that I just cut off the uh, selvages, now I can't see the grain line. Um, I will sometimes just shorten my sweaters, like I just cut the bottom off and then fix the bottom, <laughs> like do another trim. Hi Angela, how's it going? Serene um, let me see. There's the center front. I think this fills this up pretty good, but maybe this sleeve would fill this even better. Yeah. When you're short on fabric, I recommend filling up the pieces with as much as you can. That way you know you did everything you could to use as much as possible. But my grain line is definitely not hard to find now, or it is hard to find, sorry. I'm too, thinking about too many things right now. I'm just gonna go perpendicular up to the print 
All right, and so then I need to bring this down a little bit. Where's the 16 is here, 16's there. Yeah, there was a, a few YouTubers, or at least one, lifting pins and um, needles there, and a few bloggers. They're all making their announcements, so you'll see. You Want to check out any of them? This is my. That's a lot of lines right there. This fabric is really hard to cut too. Like it'll just skip over the fabric. It's crazy. It's really strong. It's a little more dangerous to cut too, I find. Oh, so for the short version, you don't have a pleat or, I mean, a um, placket. <laughs> what do we think about that? So I guess you could make the short version really just out of a way to do something a bit more casual as well. Fabric scraps. So I'm going to sew this up real quick. Oh, that was a really big notch. Uh, but I'm going to fit it tomorrow. We'll put it on the dress form. We can't not do that, right? I know we're all eager to see. What about that small bust just adjustment? So I think it's longest at that end, but is it long enough? Ooh, it's not long enough. Darn. Oh, and the sleeve isn't, well, heck. Well, that's a bummer. Do I dare put it on the cross screen? Do I dare put it on the cross screen? I don't know about doing that. Makes me a little bit nervous. I can really slide this over. I know I still need to adjust where my welt is too. All right, so now we're gonna cut on that original line. We've just moved the guts of the shirt or blouse over. all making I know I'm being I'm being really quiet sorry <laughs> I'm not usually this quiet am I I'm thinking I did a small bust adjustment on this Nancy that's what it was recommended because this blazer pattern was specifically designed for larger busted women so when I use their sizing calculator to figure out what size would work for me, it recommended it. 
It was my first time doing it, though. I didn't do a good job, but um, we got it done. If Maybe if I slide this up to my 16 there. Ooh, I can barely get it. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's my line. So uh, note that on here it is by cup size for the length. So here is my length here, the CD. Okay, so I got this on here. I just didn't get the main sleeve. So we'll see if there's anything I can do about that. Are you, Malin? It's almost done? That's awesome. You know, I think I might even try bound buttonholes on this because I've scoffed at using bound buttonholes. So, you know, I feel like it's time. I know Terry does them all the time. I, got, I gotta like, I gotta step up my game. <laughs> I'll just save this bottom portion. Can you tell how hard this fabric is to cut? Probably can hear it. Immediately move that over. Oh, cool, Libby. The Verano by Christine Haynes. Oh, I've heard of that. I can't remember what it looks like. You just remember, you or just ordered a pattern you remember seeing in So Stylish Magazine from Taz. <laughs> Wait, because of what, of the what was your favorite sewing magazine? Oh, you made you remember it? That's awesome. Oh, the Reggie dress, cute. Yeah, Nancy, they, they recommended it. You find that they aren't size inclusive? Well, that's a, that's interesting because most patterns will work for people that aren't larger busted. And they specifically designed theirs, like literally that is the, one of their missions, to design things for large busted folks. And then they also added, or not added, they also always included sizes at the upper end of the spectrum. It's only recently that they've added like the, like 12 and up, size 12 and up. So I'm not sure they have your size, Nancy. And I don't think that, you know, they're going to make any apologies about that since that there's so many folks that draft patterns for smaller sizes. And then when I use theirs, they have a sizing calculator you can try out and just Google like cashmere size calculator and then you can see if their size, they have a size for you. But I think knowing you're pretty petite. Yeah, so let me use my scissors for my notches. I what I think is interesting is that I have always been large busted, and there's um, I had to, they recommended a small bust adjustment, so I just had to do that for the very first time in my life. <laughs> All right, so my last piece is this sleeve, which I just don't think I have enough fabric for. So I'll probably do in a different fabric unless I just, oh, it's so close. Oh yeah, yeah, I do. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it because I'm using my size here. So let's pick, pick my size here. Okay. I'm gonna be really clear about which line I'm on here. This is why I should have used my PDF because I can print out what size. I swear I ordered this as a, a printout. And I even uh, started to order it as a printout. And 
I canceled it because I was like, oh wait, no, I already have this. And so I canceled my printing of it knowing I had had it already and I didn't have it already. I'm kind of doing a kind of a bad job of figuring out my grain line. I'm doing the best job I can, but I don't have a reference because I didn't leave myself one. So I'm a little off right there. So I think I'm gonna just move the grain line a little bit. Oh, I don't wanna do that awfully. I'm not going to. I'm gonna let that hang off right there. Quarter inch. Let's see, can I get it all the way up here? I'm like barely on there. We'll see. No, of course not, Nancy. Are there um, pattern companies that specialize in petite? Oh, maybe, yeah, there we go. Yeah, I mean, you guys deserve sizes too. I'm not saying that at all. My daughter's in the same boat, except that she's taller than me. <laughs> she's not petite, but she's uh, she's like my husband. She's um, got very, very slight, and it's very frustrating. And she's curvy. It's pretty hard for her to find things to fit her. They just look baggy and kind of shapeless, you know? And to get it to fit her, it's a little too revealing. Sorry, I'm off the camera here. Okay. We've got all our pieces. We've got some new fabric scraps. What? then she can't bring something she wants. <laughs> Does she actually think you're bringing your machines camping? Okay. So I did the right hand sleeve. Let's hope I did the right hand underarm. Otherwise, I'm going to have some of the print of this on the right side. All right, so let's um, go to the machine and we'll sew this up real quick. Let's see, do I need anything? I need the mouse, right? Usually power hookups, really. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, exactly, Nancy. I know what you mean. Yeah. Okay, why is it dark? Yeah, and just grading down isn't really going to work for you. I'm going to try moving this light. You don't usually need it over by the window. They're very short. Oh, really? Why is it um, dark? I'm sitting right next to all these windows. Let me just fix that real quick. How come you can't sew in Mexico? Is it just because you don't have your machine there? Oh, I see why. No, no, I don't actually see why. Alright. No, go away. Wow, it's only 73 here. Let's turn on the machine. Alright, let's see. This is my outer sleeve and it's my side back, center front, side front, inner sleeve, center back. Perfect. 
All right, let's do our sleeve. Oh, I cut two of my under sleeve. Oh well, that's okay. At least now I know I'll have the right one, right? Oh, all the must-haves too. You don't go somewhere where they have uh, sewing supplies anywhere? Yeah, do you feel like the letter low is really great for your sizing, Nancy? How are we feeling about everything over here? I'm gonna bring a camera down a little bit. Oh, cool. You're planning to knit with, knit with super thin yarn. Oh, nice. I was wondering why Sydney said that and I couldn't find that spot. Um, boy, the stitch length seems long. That'll be okay though. Just be careful with knitting in super wash because it'll, sometimes it stretches, not stretches. It doesn't keep its shape, like it'll get longer and bigger, you know? But it's so nice that you can just wash it too. They're all sticky, oh. Yeah, that is a problem. this right here? Why does that look like that? Is it just a wrinkle? Oh, it is. Okay. That looks kind of funny. All right, here's my sleeve. Center front. Side front. Here's <laughs> right now in fabrics, not be because you want Natural fibers, no. You're not a snob for that. All right, I'm gonna sew it from the top down. See how my machine, my uh, seam matches here. When I'm sewing princess seams, especially drastic ones like these, I usually keep the uh, pieces of fabric separate. You have to, you have to make sure you stay on the seam line. Be really accurate. By keeping them separate, I can kind of move this around. And you're only trying to match it up right where the needle is. You don't, you, you can't match it up for the whole seam. So you might as well just focus on the seam. Or yeah, just the seam line and your dart and your uh, notches, which mine aren't matching up right now. Wait, oh my gosh, wait, is, what is this? Yeah, that's the... Yeah, why is that matching up? Oh, did I show, I cut out the long version, didn't I? Yeah, shoot, I cut out the long version of the side front only. Okay. Okay, there's one. Yeah, we, we ain't got time for bad fabric, exactly. <laughs> Good point. Turn a boat neck into a scoop neck. Oh, with your letter low? Why is everything a boat neck? Why is that the, de the default, you know? So that's what you said, right? That it's kind of the default. That 
The boat neck is is such a specific um, Wait a minute. Where's my, oh, there it is, there it is. Okay, I was like, where's this little notch? And I was just looking at the uh, side front there. All right, so we have our, I'll trim that when I get to the side. We have our back. Hey, Nicole, how's it going? Made it out of a pillowcase. I love that. <laughs> see, when you see these seams like this, when you have it cut out like this, you're like, how do I match that up? You, you literally do just line it up right there and at the seam line. Don't ever think about it as like what shape it is. Just think about where is the seam allowance line and just line it up right there. Those little flanges there are actually there to make it so that your seam allowance, you get a nice smooth transition on the seam edge, the, the cut edge, the raw edge. And then it also makes it so that your seam allowance isn't going to fall short when you press it the proper direction. Side back will be a lot easier to sew when I get kind of halfway in that straighter section then I kind of line it up and I pull the under layer to pull it to line up to that raw edge. So see then when you open this up, right? you have a nice smooth transition right here. And then this can go either direction. And usually it's uh, also this shape so that you have room to kind of alter if you need to. Yeah, that is so strange, Nancy. I, Cause I, I actually feel like a boat neck is, is one of the, the harder neck shapes to get to a neutral position. Like I, I mainly, I guess if you were only, only wore boat necks, you would know exactly what you wanted to do with it. But because most of the world wears a scoop neck, it's like kind of the basis for all necklines, whether it's a close one or a deep one, you kind of know your way around that. It's kind of like a, you have a point of reference because you've, you've worn that so many times before, you know? All right, let's do the center back seam. There should be some nice shaping with it. That is so funny. Whoops, what am I doing here? I gotta sneeze. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Didn't want to blast you guys. Um, yeah, what, what was my fit issue with the Reynolds? I think my fit issue was that by the instructions, I needed to do the full, wait, the what, what are the options on that one? Because I know Sydney worked on that one a lot too. And then when I did the other version, it worked better, I think. All right, so now we have our back. We have our front, so let's sew the shoulders. And then we'll do the side seams and the sleeve, armhole. I'm gonna also bring this home and put on a pair of, of pants with it to see about the length because I feel like this uh, dress, wearing it, like if I try it on over my dress, 
it's going to make me go, oh yeah, this length is great. But when you try something over a dress, you know, you don't have the, the option of knowing really where is it in relation to the waist of the things you're going to wear because your dress is covering up everything. And it's kind of dangerous. You know, you need to make sure that you're actually going to have a blazer that's long enough or short enough to go with your pants. I'm going to iron this before I do the side seams. There are two bust options. Yeah. Yeah, you did, Nicole. That's awesome, though. I warmed you up, but you cooled off. Can I get this straighter? Because it's a little triggering that it's not, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll give this a good press. Yeah, it's just a muslin, but you need to press it. You really need to press it, trust me. Is there water in here? Let's put some water in here. I was just been waiting for it to like start steaming, but I think it ran out. I'm so glad my pitcher broke. <laughs> this is so much easier than using the pitcher. And I'm also not worried I'm gonna break the pitcher anymore because I broke it. And um, it's I don't worry about that falling over now. But it, it worked, it was it was handy. And I'm glad I got glad I got to use it while I could. I'm just going to press the back seam to one side. Are there any pleats back here? I did not notice if there were any pleats. To the shoulder seams, and then we'll do the underarm sleeve seam. You started with the B, and then after three tries, switched to the D. Wow. fun you guys are switching to the fall stuff I know I feel like it's like suddenly fall time you know what I mean I think I'm gonna I'm just gonna press this towards the sleeve under the under sleeve I thought my iron was falling there. You know, it's so tempted to print out a fun fabric um, in spoon flower denim to make a blazer to me. <laughs> you know, like you, you could do whatever you want. I would use their denim or their, or their Cypress canvas. I like that Cypress canvas. Yeah, right? Yeah, there's not much summer left. I mean, there will be here. Yeah, are you guys looking at like, um, are you guys looking at uh, like 
like doing it as a capsule because I've never got around to doing that this year. I never even got around to doing my like go bag capsule. Oh, let's do our side seams here. And then we'll set in the sleeve. And then we can try it on. But I'll make the changes tomorrow. I could be really mean and say you have to wait till tomorrow to see how it looks on me. I'll just leave that because then we can at least get an idea of how long the other one is, right? I almost threw all this fabric in the scrap bin when I was making the mulch mats because I was so hot to trot on those. I'm so glad I didn't. I'm so glad I at least exercised some control with those. Okay. This is... close fitting sleeve. This is the this one, I think it's the left, right? <laughs> there you go, band and fall project. Hey, I mean, yeah, you got a head start. That's awesome. I like that. <laughs> I need pants. So that's one of the reasons I'm doing the glissando. I really want, I have also two pairs of itch to, itch to stitch uh, patterns that are pants. Um, I want to make them, but I kind of hesitate because their sizes don't really come in a whole. I mean, there's a lot, but there's just not enough, you know? Oh wait, this is not going with this word. I was like, this feels funny and I, this is why. You want to do the notch to the underarm seam. So the two pairs of pants I have for itch to stitch are the, um, Sequo I think it's the Sequoia cargo pants and is there Upland trousers? Upland? They're like a, like a Chino. I almost put those on the schedule. But then I remembered, oh, I just got the glissando. Oh, wait, I probably need to ease this in. Not so fast, partner. All right, I'm gonna put an easing stitch in here real quick. I'm just gonna open this up here. Make it a little bit thinner. And then let's get this notch matched. Just the front area. Oh, really, Donna? That's awesome. Yeah, I think they're really cute. Hey, Barbara, how's it going? Well, you missed me struggling to do a small bust adjustment. <laughs> you planned your fall caps. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, trying to get it through this seam here. I almost bought some corduroy as well. Did you guys see, oh, who was it that did the um, pink dawn jeans recently? Pink corduroy dawn jeans. You know, when everybody's Instagram names have some sort of sewing pun, it's hard to keep people straight sometimes. You'd be oh, interested in Upland video? Nice. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I'll, I will sew them at some point. There we go. That's enough for that side. Yeah, Sydney's made a lot of Pietras. 
What side did I pull on this side? I did pull that side, didn't I? Okay, why are you being stubborn? Start sliding, buddy. Oh, this is why. Sometimes your thread will get sucked back in and then you sew it down. This is the bobbin side. Well, it's, I don't know if it's the bobbin side, but it's the underside of my gathering. And let's see if I can get this. There we go, just past that little spot. Oh, Eddie Stone jeans. So um, I would like to make some more jeans, continue my collection of jeans. I don't have the Eddie Stone. Uh, what other jeans, you guys? I think I'd like to sew a pair of jeans next month in October. I'll also be making the uh, men's Ryan Raglan and potentially the uh, Strathcona Henley. Which way did I press that? Remember, it's just a muslin. Don't worry about it. I know I'm doing a, a pretty decent job in putting my setting in my sleeve, but honestly, just because I love to sew, <laughs> I don't mind it. But um, don't worry about it. I'll try and get a few tucks in there for you guys. Yeah, you're reminding me, Willa, and I would like to sew some more jeans. I'm trying to also not have just you know, so many jeans in my wardrobe, but I just love them. I haven't, Sydney, you know, Muna and Broad doesn't come in my size. I would really love to sew some of their stuff, but I need a way to do it. You know what I mean? I, I should see if Hearts carries them. I don't know if Muna and Broad uh, wholesale like that. Don't you love how I just try to scratch my eye through my glasses? I always am wearing glasses. You're not sure you want to try to upsize your gingers? Yeah, I don't blame you. Those noise chains look really nice on people. Pun intended. All right. See you tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We have our Working blazer. There's the roll line, right? Like that. Hi, Carrie, how's it going? We're pretty much almost done. <laughs> New month in and it's a mess. Oh no. All right, um, let's put the full screen. His first day of school. Nice, Nancy, how fun. <laughs> That's awesome. How old's your grandson, Nancy? Okay. I, I was trying to think of some um, anticipatory music, but I couldn't think of anything to do, you know. Oh, this, this feels actually pretty good. can't see myself because of the thread arm. You just got the notification now. What the heck? Using the, okay, so this is that little part that, the sleeve is definitely too long for me and a little too narrow, maybe. Maybe it's not too narrow. I don't know what the, seam, the hem allowance is. Okay, so let's, Cut this off. Really? That's crazy. I'm always here at the same time. We'll pin this side. Ouch!
do we think? I feel like the shoulders are too far out. It needs to come like this. It still seems loose right here. It looks it looks better over here almost, doesn't it? So remember there's a, a you know it's a blazer collar. I didn't write the I didn't draw the roll line on it. Did I just say that right? I didn't draw the roll line on it. That's what I said, right? I kind of heard something different. Okay, so right here, this this looks too far out. I want it to be in like right here. And then I think like, see how there's this? Hi, Ray. How's it going? This is still pretty loose right here. See that? It feels better, you know, over here. But then, um, the one thing I'm not a fan of is when I put, this is as high as I can get my arm. Oh, that's awesome, Beverly. Look at you. You can do each day you want. That's new. That's new because usually, usually it's just like weekly and you would have had to have three different notifications, one for Wednesday, one for Thursday, one for Saturday. I wish I could set that up for my um, Patreons. Yeah, right, Nicole? So how does it look across the back? I do, Lynn. Oh, so smart. So smart, Lynn. Thank you. You're absolutely correct. I need to try it on with the sleeve, shoulder pads. The sleeve heads, though, that's something I gotta like do. Oh, where are they? Does anyone else find shoulder pads a little bit creepy? That is exactly what's going on here. That's pretty awesome, Barbara. Okay. Lynn, you're, you're so smart to remind me of that. Very smooth in back. Okay, good to know. Okay, I don't want them to move. Underarm side looks a touch baggy. Oh, it has it in alarms. They went into everything you made for me. Okay, that definitely um, takes it, but I don't like this right here. You see? And I don't like the lack of mobility. It's like, see, like when I look over here, this arm, this is pretty high up. So that's what it feels like it needs to be raised, but it definitely does not need that. I definitely feel the loss of the inch because he look at, this is my overlap right now. I don't have enough. So I need to add the waist back. The sleeve hangs nice though. Like, look at that. That That is a very nice hanging sleeve. And you know, I, I do feel like in the photos of the um, blazer, this looks like this on a lot of them. I'm wondering if that's classic, but I mean like, I, I don't know if I can get over that. This is not, see that? Eh -eh. Arm size is not too low. Look at that. 
Remember, there's a half inch seam allowance, so it's a, a half inch lower. So if I take this out, what happens is it makes my armhole smaller, which makes my sleeve smaller. Like, it's fine if I'm like this, right? If I don't button it up, it's fine. It hangs nice, it feels good, it's staying put, right? It's not uh, ooching off my body. It does feel a little bit like, look over here, you see that? This is, this is my shoulder. It's way too far out. <laughs> okay, well this is awesome. Is the apex at the correct place? Um, not really. I mean, I feel like it could come forward more, like this whole seam. But my apex is uh, kind of funny because of that brush reduction. Yeah, I see what you mean. I hate this adjustment. I'm going to be honest with you. I hate doing this adjustment. <laughs> my hair out of the way. Looks good on this side, doesn't it? <laughs> so you can see my, my shoulder pad kind of sneaking out there. Yeah. All right, well, I feel like I just learned a lot. I mean, I think it's, you know, like, like sitting here, you see that? Now it's closer. There's no pleats, right? Sleeveless blazer. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Go for a vest. Um, I've definitely seen sewists do things like that where they're just like, I liked it better this way. <laughs> I think uh, that the person who did the unelastic uh, sleeves on the Paddington top, probably started sewing that thing and was like, this is a nightmare. <laughs> and they were just like, let's see how it looks without the elastic, right? All right, so I'm gonna work on these fitting issues tomorrow. Sound like a plan? Well, that was an adventure. We did a lot though. So I made a small bust adjustment, which, you know, I, I don't feel like that was a bad call. Do I have the sleeve on back to front? No, I lined up my notches. It was fine. Back to front. No. The, um, yeah, all the, all the notches matched fine. I can double check though. That can make a difference, but it's not going to make this difference. It's not going to change that. It would actually hang funny and see the, the thing about a sleeve is, do you see the natural bend in the arm right here? That's what I mean. My arm is relaxed right now and this is a very classic sleeve. When you can see the bend, that's nice. That's a two piece sleeve or sometimes when you see a sleeve dart, that's what they're trying to accomplish because you naturally, your arm does bend forward a little bit, so. I, I'm also, I wanna try it on my dress form to see how it fits on the dress form so that I know what I'm fixing. Yeah, I don't like that issue, Lynn, I hate it. Like it looks okay when I'm sitting here unbuttoned you know, but I feel like I'm losing my stuffing. <laughs> well, this is awesome. I mean, look at that. It looks pretty good when I'm sitting here, but you can see this right here. And that's what I do see in the pictures. I, it's the one thing I'm always, I want to go like this to them. But I, it made me kind of go, maybe I don't understand what the hallmarks of a good fitting blazer are. So I thought this is such a great project for me to even like delve into that a little deeper. 
you know, like, it's fine. Like, I can walk around. This is fine. If you saw me and I said I made this, you'd probably be like, nice, nice job, right? Um, I think this is very noticeable here. Why isn't it as noticeable over here? It is, though. Like, it's there. All right. <laughs> it's kind of boring now, sorry. <laughs> but I think we'll be able to sort this out. That's what this process is all about. Yeah, I agree. And it, that's the thing is like, I'm going to actually look at it because I, I feel like we all have our pet peeves when it comes to what, how things fit us, right? And the, some of the things that I don't like, I don't hear most people complaining about. So I've realized that those are centric to me. And one of them is sleeves. And that's why I add a lift to a lot of my sleeves, which is kind of a weird thing. It's not weird, but it's not common. And it does add a little fullness right here. Like this looks like it has a lift in it, but the sleeve isn't acting like it. Yeah, I agree, Soap Lady. I should probably stay on the um, full screen, huh? And I just don't, like right here, when you feel it pull right here across the elbow, Yeah. There's no sleeve pulling on it. Exactly, Barbara. So if I picked up this whole thing and moved it in. So, so contrary to what most people think, better fitting sleeve is closer to your armhole, right? You don't want, like it does, it, this does look kind of low, but you need room for a garment underneath. And when you have the armhole more onto your armhole, you have more mobility, right? Because if, if this point is down here, you're gonna feel it. If it's up here, you don't. And if you look at like athletic apparel, like serious athletic apparel, we always put those seams, those tension points um, beyond the joint, right? In fact, some of them kind of, the pattern pieces look like my sleeves used to look like a mushroom. They were kind of crazy because I would move those points um, past that point of tension. You don't do that in, in fashion apparel, right? So I think that this butts up against what is uh, acceptable in the sewing world. And we've just kind of gone, gone along with it because that's the accept, accepted way to do it. And so how far do you push what you like and fit going against those things without distorting the um, classic view of it, right? Because part of the classic view is some of these fit issues, right? <laughs> yeah, and I really like the, I really like being able, like, do I think I'm gonna button it a lot? No, but I wanna be able to. Yeah, that's why grown on sleeves don't work, exactly. I mean, they work, but. You can't make them long sleeve, and there's a reason for that. That's why so many indie patterns are kind of limiting that way. You're like, oh, I love the Charlie Captain. I want to wear it all year round. I want a long sleeve version. You can't do that. Yeah, and yeah, t-shirts, if you were to copy a t-shirt pattern, granted, a lot of those are drop shoulder, but sometimes some of the more fitted ones, you, if you looked at it, you'll notice that the armhole actually goes up <laughs> near arm it's so the armhole is so small and that's how you get that mobility but it's stretchy too they can rely on that and those aren't the best drafted patterns oftentimes so anyway i'm excited i'm nervous but i'm excited so i think this is going to be really great it's my little table there i was like what is that <laughs> i couldn't figure it out so tomorrow i am going to tackle these fit issues and then I'll probably cut and sew one more. 
Maybe Saturday I'll be ready to cut it out, but I'm gonna see what you guys think. Like if you guys are thinking, hey, do you, I don't want you to cut it out yet. I wanna be behind, let me know. I can cut it the following Saturday. And most of you probably are like, I don't care what you do because I'm not sewing a blazer. <laughs> I understand that too. So, and then I'm also gonna look at the hem length because I might, uh, this might be okay. You know what I mean? Because I actually have it folded up a little more, right? I'm gonna see what the hem allowance is because that might be, because the lining would be sewn to that. That might be perfect. Cool. Thanks for coming, you guys. This is an adventure for me too. Sorry, it was kind of like faltering on the small bust adjustment. We got there. And I think I need to add a little bit to the waist because of that. I'm gonna look into those now instead of looking into it five minutes before I stream. All right, you guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Set your reminders. <laughs> now let me know how. <laughs> oh yeah, the length. You're right, I should not do the long length. Hit the like, Kay. Hi, Martina, I'm just taking off. I'm gonna look at the hem length though. You know, Mar Martina Garofalo, uh, this is unhemmed. I like this length. Oh, cool, Fiona. Hi, April. Hey, cool. Bye, Malin, bye, Terry. Yeah, yeah, we'll check out the length too. I'll check out what the hem, uh, hem allowance is. And then I'll be able to determine if that's exactly what length we want. Yeah, that's what, that's what everyone's saying, Carrie. The, I know a lot of people who don't get them at all. I don't, I don't get them for when um, Andrea goes live. I'm about to sneeze, I'm gonna go, bye.